The good news is that God wants you to pass the test of life. Kwamba habari njema ni kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu anataka wewe ufaulu hiyo mitiani ya maisha. So he never allows the test you face to be greater than the grace he gives you to handle them. Kwa hiyo hawezi kuruhusu kukupa mtihani mkubwa ambao wewe huwezi kutatua. God keeps his promise. Mwenyezi Mungu anaweka ahadi, anatunza ahadi, and he will not allow you to be tested beyond your power to remain firm. Na hawezi kukupa mtihani ambao utakuwa zaidi au utakuwa yani zaidi ya nguvu zako za kutatua. At the time you are put to the test, katika muda ambao unawekwa kwenye mtihani au unakuwa katika mtihani, he will give you the strength to endure it. Yeye mwenyewe atakupatia nguvu ya kuweza kusustain au kuishi vizuri au kushinda mtihani huu ambao utakuwepo. And so provide you with a way out. Na pia yeye atakupatia njia, atakuonyesha njia ya kutoka kwenye tatizo ambalo uko nalo. Nafikiri hii ni sehemu ambayo inaweza kuwa inatu encourage, inatupatia moyo zaidi pale tunapopata matatizo kwenye maisha. Kwamba haijalishi tatizo kubwa kiasi gani. Kumbuka tu kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu hawezi kukupa tatizo ambalo wewe huwezi kulitatua. Ina maana atatupa tatizo ambalo anajua unaweza kulitatua. Ili itakuwa gumu kidogo kwa sababu labda ni kitu ambacho hujawahi kufanya lakini amini kwamba ipo njia na anakutazamia na hataki ufaili anataka ufaulu. Kwa hiyo ukimwamini Mungu basi he will show you a way out. Yeye atakuonyesha njia kutoka kwenye tatizo lolote lile. Nafikiri tuongee kidogo hapa. Mara nyingi sisi watu kipata matatizo labda tunakimbilia kwa watu wenzetu, binadamu wenzetu. Lakini Mwenyezi Mungu haioni hivyo kwake. Yaani anaona kwamba anataka kwamba kila tunapopata matatizo tumkimbilie yeye kwanza. Lakini sisi mara nyingi unakuta tunamkimbilia mtu kwanza. Shida yoyote ile, yoyote ile, yoyote ile. Utakapomkimbilia yeye kwanza anaweza kukuonyesha au kukuletea mtu sasa ambaye anaweza kujikuta tatizo moja kwa moja. Lakini wewe kwa kukimbilia watu unaweza kukimbilia watu hata moja na wote wakashindwa kukusaidia. Every time you pass a test, kila muda ambao ukifaulu mtihani, God notices and makes plans to reward you in eternity. Kwamba unapofanikiwa kufaulu mtihani fulani Mwenyezi Mungu anagundua, anaona kinachoendelea na tayari pale pale anakuandalia mpango maalum wa kukulipa au kukupa zawadi nzuri katika maisha ya milele. Mm-hmm. Na kumbuka pale yalitoa mambo mawili. Hilo ni la kwanza tulikuwa tunaliangalia kwamba life on earth is a test, kwamba maisha ya dunia ni mtihani. Na jambo la pili ambalo tumesema tunaliangalia katika chapter hii linasema kwamba life on earth is a trust. Maisha ya dunia ni imani is a trust. This is the second metaphor of life. Who ni kama eh, au tuseme hii ni kama fumbo lingine la pili kuhusiana la maisha. Kwamba maisha haya ni imani. Our time on earth and our energy uh, maisha yetu hapa duniani pamoja na nguvu zetu, our intelligence, akili yetu au uwezo wetu wa kiakili, uh, opportunities, fursa, relationships, mahusiano and resources are all gifts from God. Na vitu vyote ambavyo tunavyohitaji au tulivyonavyo zote ni zawadi kutoka kwa Mwenyezi Mungu that he has entrusted to our care and management. Ni zawadi kutoka kwa Mwenyezi Mungu ambazo ametupatia sisi tuzitunze our care and management. We are stewards of whatever God gives us. Kwamba sisi ni mawakili, stewards, sisi ni mawakili wa chochote kile ambacho Mwenyezi Mungu anatupatia. This concept of stewardship begins with the recognition that God is the owner of everything kwamba hili wazo la uwakili wa Mwenyezi Mungu linatokea katika utambuzi kwamba God is the owner of everything kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu ndio mmiliki wa kila kitu and everyone on earth yani mmiliki wa kila kitu na kila mtu au kila kiumbe kinachotembea hapa duniani kinachotembea kwenye earth the world and all that is in it belongs to the Lord kwamba dunia yote na kila kitu kilichomo ni cha Mwenyezi Mungu the earth and all who live on it are his kwamba ardhi na wote wanaoishi katika ardhi hiyo wote ni mali ya Mwenyezi Mungu we never really own anything kiukweli sisi huwa hatumiliki kitu chochote during our brief stay on earth katika muda wetu mchache tunaoishi hapa duniani <laughs> we never really own anything during our brief stay on earth kwamba sisi kiukweli huwa hatumiliki kitu chochote katika maisha yetu ya muda mfupi hapa duniani. God just loans the earth to us. Ni Mwenyezi Mungu kama ametukopesha tu hiyo ardhi kwa muda uh, ambao sisi tupo hapa. 
It was God's property before you arrived. Ilikuwa ni mali ya Mwenyezi Mungu kabla hata wewe hujaja hapa. And God will loan it to someone else after you die. Na pia Mwenyezi Mungu atawakopesha tena watu wengine au atawapatia watu wengine baada wewe utakapokufa. You just get to enjoy it for a while. Unachotakiwa ni kuifurahia tu kwa muda mfupi. When God created Adam and Eve, Mungu alipomuumba Adam na Hawa, he entrusted the care of his creation to them. Aliwaamini na kuwapatia uh, his creation, uumbaji wake kwao. And appointed them trustees of his property. Na akawaweka wao wawe kama wasimamizi wa mali hizo. God blessed them. Mwenyezi Mungu aliwabariki and said, "Have many children so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I'm putting you in charge." Kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu aliwabariki na akasema, "Mzaye watoto wengi sana ambao watasambaa kwenye ardhi waishi hapa duniani and bring it under their control." Na pia wao ndio watakuwa wamiliki yani watakuwa wata wamiliki eh? i'm putting you in charge nyie ndio nawaweka mwe viongozi the first job god gave humans was to manage and take care of god's stuff on earth kazi ya kwanza kabisa Mwenyezi Mungu aliyowapatia wanadamu ilikuwa ni kulinda au kuangalia vitu vya Mwenyezi Mungu hapa duniani this role has never been rescinded kwamba kazi hii au nafasi hii ya mwanadamu haijawahi kuondolewa wala kubadilishwa. It is a part of our purpose today. Ni sehemu ya kusudi letu leo hii. Anza kupata vitu hapo, anza kupata vitu, anza kupata vitu. Everything we enjoy is to be treated as part of our sorry. Everything we enjoy is to be treated as a trust that God has placed in our hands. Kwamba kila kitu tunachokifurahia hapa duniani tunatakiwa tukichukulie kama ini amana ambayo Mwenyezi Mungu ametupatia kwenye mikono yetu na kuna swali limeulizwa hapa nimelipenda na kwamba what do you have that God, what do you have that God hasn't given you kwamba kitu gani wewe ulichonacho leo ambacho Mwenyezi Mungu hajakupatia hebu fikiria nini hicho ambacho wewe unacho unamiliki chochote kile ambacho si Mwenyezi Mungu ambaye amekupatia Anaendelea maandishi anasema if all you have is from God kama kila kitu ulicho nacho kinatoka kwa Mwenyezi Mungu so why boast as though you have accomplished something on your own kwamba kwa nini uweke majigambo uwe na majigambo kama vile vitu wewe umevitengeneza wewe mwenyewe kwa mikono yako au uwezo wako kuna mfano kidogo anaotoa hapa anaeleza kwamba years ago a couple let my wife and me use their beautiful beachfront home in Hawaii for a vacation. Miaka mingi iliyopita uh, watu fulani marafiki a couple wapenzi waliwahi kuturuhusu mimi na mke wangu tukatumia nyumba yao ambayo iko Hawaii iko pembezoni mwa bahari kwa ajili ya vacation yani kwenda likizo fupi. It was an experience it was an experience we could never have afforded kiukweli ulikuwa ni wakati ambao tusingeweza kuumudu ki, ki ni gala, yani zile gharama kifedha kwamba kupata likizo fupi kama hiyo kwa eneo kama lile and we enjoyed it immensely na tulifurahia kikweli kweli we were told tuliambiwa use it just like it's yours tumieni nyumba kama vile ni ya kwenu so we did na tulifanya we swam in the pool tuliogelea kwenye pool eh? ate the food in the refrigerator tulikula vyakula vya kwenye fridge used the bath towels tukatumia mataulo ya bafuni and dishes vyombo and dishes na pia hii inaweza kuwa vyombo kwa maana dishes lakini pia kama ameongelea bafuni maybe dishes lakini tuchukue vyombo and even jumped on beds in fun na pia ni tuliruka ruka kitandani kwa kucheza yani walijiachia kama kwao but we knew all along that it wasn't really ours. Lakini tulijua kabisa kutoka ndani ya mioyo yetu kwamba pale hapakuwa kwetu, yani ile nyumba haikuwa ya kwetu. So we took special care of everything. Kwa hiyo tuliijali sana katika hali ya juu. 
We enjoyed the benefit of using the home without owning it. Tulifurahia uhuru wa ku yani, yani tulifurahia ule uhuru wa kuifurahia hiyo nyumba bila kuimiliki. Kwa hiyo hiyo ndio namna ambayo kama vile sisi tuko hapa duniani Mwenyezi Mungu ametupa ni kila kitu tuko hapa namna hiyo. Our culture says if you don't own it ukwamba <laughs> our culture says if you, you don't own it kwamba tamaduni zina zetu zinasema kama haukimiliki kitu you won't take care of it kwamba hauwezi kukijali lakini kwa mtu ambaye anamfuata Mwenyezi Mungu katika viwango vya juu ana hiyo ni tofauti ina maana yeye anatakiwa aishi akiwa anajua kwamba hivi ni vitu ambavyo tumepewa na Mwenyezi Mungu tunatakiwa tuishi navyo kwa adabu na heshima vizuri kwa sababu ni amana ambayo tutatakiwa turudishe I must take the best care of it that I can lazima ni vilinde hivi vitu na kuvijali vizuri katika uwezo wangu wote ninaoweza Those who are trusted with something valuable must show they are worthy of that trust. Wale watakao waminiwa kwa vitu vya thamani lazima waonyeshe kwamba kweli wanaweza kuaminika kwa vitu hivyo. Mm-hmm. 